from the campus of Nashville Christian in beautiful Bellevue, Tennessee. This is Mike McPherson along with Chandler Clark bringing you tonight's broadcast of the third football game of the season for our Nashville Christian Eagles as we host the Battleground Academy team that has grown up the interstate, and this should be a good classic game. Both teams uh, have struggled to get a win. We are 0-2, uh, losing two games by one score. So at this time, we'll have our national anthem. A stirring rendition of our national anthem. And Chandler, we've got a great music director and Mr. Blake there. Uh, yes, we do. Good evening, everybody. Thank right. you so much for joining us. Well, Chandler, this is uh, the fourth game of the football season, not our fourth game. but And we're just now getting into the booth with two away games and an off week that's kind of been interesting. Yes, it's so good to be back at Keaton Field. We've got a, a packed house here tonight. Cars still spilling in the parking lot for, uh, well, one team is going to get their first win of the season tonight, and we're just hoping that it's us, Mike. And we are ready in mass to rush onto the field. Both teams hungry for a, a win. We've had two one-score losses. We are literally two plays from being 2-0, and oh, and I'm sure we've been able to work on a lot of things to get a little bit better those were non-regional games, so we're okay. And here come the Eagles onto the football field. Wherever you are in the world, it's football time in Bellevue. And Chandler, a beautiful night tonight with uh, so many of the, the fans on the edge of the end zone enjoying the game in their lounge chairs. If everybody was in the stands, we would be over capacity. We've got a little room right now. But a great crowd looking on. And the BJ Wildcats across the way, dressed in white, trimmed in blue, and National Christian, all Navy tonight. And our cheering section coming back into the stands from the football field. And we're just about ready for the kickoff. And our team just about ready. Mike, one thing I'm very interested in tonight is how does BGA's defense hold up against the Eagles? They've allowed 120 plus to their three opponents so far and um, we'll be seeing if uh, the Eagles offense could take advantage of, of that or if uh, they've been working hard this week, the Wildcats that is, on uh, improving their, uh, their defensive schemes. Well, the Eagles are ready to kick off to the Wildcats and 
Wyatt Martin will be doing the, the honors there. And, and as always, uh, Chandler, anybody that's listening, if we need to turn up the volume or down the volume, whatever, uh, please give us a call. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put my number out there to the world. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea, Mike. Okay, we'll wait. But if you know me or Chandler, is your wife watching tonight, Chandler? I think she will be. Okay, maybe she can give us a call and uh, let us know how the volume is. We uh, – want to give you as much of an enjoyable broadcast as possible. So White Martin is ready to tee it up, and we are going to kick off right on time and back deep for BGA is Junior Adler Puckett, six foot 180, a junior, and he is also back there along with Christian Thompson, who is a freshman. Number 26. So White Martin tees it up, marks it off. White has really got a foot, got a nice leg, and uh, very few people know Chandler. Uh, I'm the reason he's kicking. We'll go over that story again later because I do like to remind people every year. I love hearing the story, Mike. All right, thank you. Here we go with the kickoff, and it's football time in Bellevue. It's a short pooch kick. It's going to come down and hit out of bounds, which will be a penalty, and BGA – We'll have the option to move us back five yards or go ahead and start the scrimmage from, I believe, the 35. Mike, so, I've seen from two people that the sound is in a good spot. So thank you to uh, Coach Patton and uh, my lovely wife for, uh, <laughs> for both oh, reaching out and, and verifying. Thank you. I appreciate that. And a lot of that is we just both have nice – tones to our voice and it just wow It'd be the first time i'd be told that so thank I you i think mainly mine is used to put people to sleep but that's <laughs> only why in class so only yeah just in class and church yeah okay bj to the line national christian we'll get our our front four up there in a second bga got two running backs they're going to handle the one up to the middle he's going to get a little running room to the outside but uh, a good pursuit there and knocking him down is donovan smith from his corner spot look like Chandler looked like he's going to have a little running room for five or six yards, and Donovan pursued from the corner spot beautifully. So up front, our nose guard, Peyton Woodard, number 54, a senior. Uh, our defensive tackles, Kevin Bradley, number 66, senior, and Jaden Potts, 57, uh, senior. And on the defensive ends, Ryan DeMumbrium on the right side most of the time, and Vasily Santas, a uh, hockey player on the left. And here goes BGA. And it looks like Bradley, along with some others, have knocked him down. And good pursuit is we're going to force a third down and long at that point. So we'll try to get more attention to the names of BGA. Sorry, we don't cover uh, enough to know about BGA very much. We've got, most of the time, JT Robbins and Cam Cardin sneaking up from the Defensive slots. Number three, Braylon Tolan is over here on the corner. Uh, Lawson Andrews, uh, free safety, a sophomore, and Donovan Smith on the corner. And here is third and six. BGA is going to pass. Slant across the middle. Is, is that intercepted? Ladies and gentlemen, Braylon Toll has picked it off the turf. It's the Eagles' ball. What a turnover. It took a while for the referees to signal. <laughs> But they finally did and made the right call. And we are all of a sudden in BGA territory in business. Less than 50 yards to go for a touchdown. Heads up play there from Braylon. His eyes were on the quarterback the entire time and jumped it perfectly. And now we have got phenomenal field position here just past midfield. National Christian, 40, not first down and 49 yards to go for a touchdown. Jared Curtis is your freshman quarterback. Back there with him is Cam Carden. He's back to pass. A quick out pass to Warren Brode. He is going to make a move down the sideline and pick up maybe five, and there's going to be a late flag coming in. That usually means something on the offense, but we'll see. As a nice quick out pattern there to Warren Brode by Curtis, and they're going to call it on us. While they're marking off, Devin Ray, uh, number 68, senior center, 
on flanking him on each side of our guards, Jaden Potts, number 45, a senior, and also Peyton Woodard, number 54, a senior. And our tackles on the left side, Cooper Collins, number 79, a junior, and Kevin Bradley, right tackle. We'll uh, see who our wideouts are. It looks like we're going to have Jaden Satterfield on one side. And I believe Donovan Smith will be coming to this side. It looks like they do interchange some. Warm Brood, Warm Brood is going to come over here along with Satterfield. So they will flank over here wide. JT Robbins, number 10, is on the other side. Is that right? Curtis is going to give to Cam Cardin. He's got running money, 45, 50, 45, down to the 43-yard line. Cam Cardin, make that the 41. Good running right up the middle, Chandler and we just leveled that front line of BGA. Yeah, great blocks there from Collins and Potts to clear a nice lane for Cam, and we're just before uh, first down territory here now. This time, Warm Road and Satterfield go to the right side. Left side over here is Smith. Cam Carden again. Wants the ball, he gets it up the middle. Pounds to the 40, to the 35. He's got room to the 30, to the 25. Inside that 20 yard line. Cam Carden racking up yardage, big yardage on two plays, and Nashville Christian already pounding at the door as they take the ball inside the 20 to the red zone. And why not give it to them every time? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Mike. Two straight plays. We'll see if they make it a third here. He's back there again. And in of him, JT Robbins is the fullback. He'll probably be blocking for him. And it goes to him again. Left side, this time they anticipated. We did not get a push on the good, on the front line there. And Evan Henberry in on the top stop. 5'9 junior for BGA. So it will go to second down and 11. He actually <clears throat> lost a yard. So we gather at the, at the huddle ready to bring the Scrimmage line at the 20, and Cam Carden to the left as the running back beside Curtis. He's got three wide outs to the right side, one to the left. He's going to pass. Slant across the middle is intercepted, and that's going to go for big yards, 30. Fortunately, a good uh, tackle open field uh, by number two there. And it was uh, actually number – I'm sorry, what number two was it? Uh, we, we made a great stop. I think it's number four, actually. We don't have number four. I'm talking about for us, the tackle. I'm sorry. Uh, that was a G uh, Curtis there. Was that? Did Jared make the stop? He My did. My fault. Jared uh, probably saved a touchdown there of his own interception. So BGA gets it back. We uh, exchange turnovers at the 8.03 mark of the first quarter. BGA huddles. And they will begin scrimmage at the 35-yard line. So, beautiful night here. A little humid, but it's really a nice short sleeve night for the crowd. And our home opener, we're 0-2. BJ 0-3. Both teams desperate to get a win as they start regional play. Eye formation. Ball given to the tailback, left side. He's got good running room. Push to the 40. Gets another push to the 45. And... Is going to lay across the first down marker, and he's going to have enough for the first down yardage. Kevin Bradley, the main impactor on the tackle, Austin Ford, with good running room that time. So a first down, their initial first down. So they, BGA has pushed it to the 46-yard line as they come out of the, of the huddle. Locke Kennedy is your quarterback. We've got a tailback there and a fullback. Ball goes to tailback. No, he's going to pass. Rolls to the left. Looking, waiting. The pass on an out pattern is complete. It's caught on a nice sliding reception by Tucker Carroll. Uh, excuse me, Oliver Sellers. A little um, down and to the out. And they pick up Chandler. Their second first down. So BGA, after giving up two long runs to us, has put together two first downs of their own. And that was a great little rollout pass there from, uh, from Kennedy on the run with Potts uh, trailing him, able to keep his composure and get the first down. Kennedy under center, Ford is gonna get the ball. He's gonna go up the middle. He's gonna get about three lunging forward. Hitting him first, I believe, was Bradley, I believe. That'll make it second down and about 
as they bring it back in. Oh, they're going to they're going to mark off a penalty here on BGA. So both teams uh, guilty of a turnover here or a, a, a penalty, and they've each gotten turnovers here also. Got uh, number 53, uh, Nate Thompson, also on your defensive line, now checked in. The ball pushed back to the 47-yard line. Nashville Christian will scrimmage against BGA from that point. It will be first down and long. Ball back at the 47. Looks like first down at about 23. Passing situation possibly for BGA. Instead, they're going to do a jet run this way. Gets one block, but not another. And we knock him down on a nice open field tackle that time by number 12, Lawson Andrews, coming up from the free safety spot. He ran a long way like Donovan did earlier. The ball nose just to the 50 for a pickup of about three. It's going to be second down and exactly 20 yards to go. If you just joined us, both teams have made turnovers. Neither team has scored. We're at the halfway point of the first quarter at six minutes to go and ticking. BGA huddles and snaps to the line. Got Kennedy. One, one more uh, eagle in there that's checked in. Ryan DeMumbry, number 17, on that right side of the line. So let's see. Kennedy has come all the way over, and he's come out for some reason. Are they putting in – have they called timeout? They're going to have to, aren't they? So – it looks like Gavin Berger Jr. is coming in for Kennedy. He is a 180 junior. I'm assuming out of Franklin. So at 544 to go, safe guess. Gavin Berger has got to come in without uh, really without any uh, time to warm up, but he's back to pass under pursuit. That ball's deflected high in the air. He catches it himself and knocks it down. JT Robbins. Linebacker with the initial pursuit there. Second down and 19. 528, great pursuit there. And Berger was uh, under duress as we really charged with that front four there. Bryson Holt, number 21, checking in. Looks like at linebacker. Yeah, great play by JT. Knew he wasn't going to be able to get to the quarterback in time, so he did what he could. And it, Launched himself right in front of him just to block his uh, field of vision and was able to get a hand on it. All right. Here we go, third and long. They've got 20 yards to go. Berger back to pass. He's being pursued. Throws an inside screen complete, but not for much. Falling on top of him was J.T. Robbins, and they will push the ball to the 48 of Nashville Christian, but that's all, making it fourth and 18 and an obvious punting situation for the Wildcats. It's a good job by the Eagles to cover that uh, halfback screen there and not give up a big play. Berger stays in there to punt. The snap to him and he'll kind of line drive it and we're going to, oh, we tried to pick it up. The ball's going to roll into the end zone. Donovan wanted to, to pick it up, lost his footing. So, Nashville Christian has stopped BGA again for the second time. The first one was on turnovers, this on downs. And so we will scrimmage from the 20-yard line on a nice warm night. Pretty comfortable if you're outside and not in a stuffy press box. We are hoping they will um, personalize um, with air conditioning and fans in the future. Soft drinks and hot dogs at halftime. So that's something Mr. Andrew Atkins is going to start pushing for here. So, Nashville Christian, Jared Curtis brings his team up. Nashville Christian, Cam Carden in the backfield. And it's going to go to him off left guard, and they're going to pile him up for basically no gain. BGA's right side of their line was there. Again, Devin Ray, your center. Guards Woodard and Potts, tackles Collins and Bradley. Cam Carden comes out of the lineup for a moment. Peyton Woodard checking out as well for a play. Looks like Brock Haywood is now in uh, the running back spot in place of Carden. In motion is Robbins. Right side, that's your sophomore. That's Brock attempting to get some running room. Not much there. Brock Haywood 
Got a lot of time last year as a freshman. And so he's ready to go here. He's scrappy. I think that's why, even though he's young, he's, he's getting this playing time. The coaching staff sees that he's, uh, he's got a lot of dog in him, for sure. Bryson Holt back into the contest, and he's going to come, it looks like, to a slot to the left side here. National Christian, 39. Jared Curtis back to pass. Fakes, now he's going to run. He's got a little running room, gets to the outside, but nice pursuit by BGA. And a flag thrown right on top of the line of scrimmage. Chandler, you believe it's against the boys in white and blue? I sure hope so. I didn't see anything. It is holding on the Eagles. That will be declined because it is an obvious punting down. Yeah, Jared's been successful in our first two games using his legs, right. uh, buying time to extend plays, and uh, just unfortunately wasn't able to find a way around uh, defender there. So we'll be giving it back to the, the Wildcats with, uh, with good field position. Jacob Ellis back inside the 10 to take the uh, snap for the punt. He kind of rugs me hit and gets a nice roll. That ball is going to carry all the way inside the 35 to the 33 of BGA. Nice punt. Chandler, who is a math teacher, is going to add that up for us. I mean, I didn't see where he caught it, but I would say that he did. Was, he didn't. It, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, where Jacob uh, caught the punt uh, back from. So well, it goes from the line of scrimmage. I hope that'll help. Fair. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think he's in the the 40, 50 yard right, yeah, category. Pretty, yeah, it was a great little boot there. Nice punt. Got a nice roll. So the third possession by BGA. We've had five possessions, no points, and the crowd a little bit quieted right now but uh, ready to explode anytime there's a big play. BGA trying to make that happen right now. Ball given to the tailback and he is pounded at the line as the entire interior of the Eagle defense was right there to stop him for no gain. The ball at the 35 yard line. I don't think it helped the running back to follow his uh, fullback uh, straight into his back. Uh, I think that's what slowed him up a little bit there. All right, BGA on second and 10, quickly to the line, ready to play. Ball to the tailback again. He's sweeping wide this time, and he's going to pick up some good yardage streaking down that left sideline. His knee did touch before he went out of bounds, and it looks like it's going to push the ball to about a seven-yard gain. The referee spotted at the 42. The first down marker is at the 45, third and three. BGA has... Made two first downs so far, as have the Eagles, but nobody has nodded anything on the scoreboard. So BGA coming to the line. And Kennedy's back in there at quarterback. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And this time they snuffed out the play. They had him for no – actually, they had him for a loss. He's going to struggle back and possibly pick up a yard – maybe a yard and a half. It looks like it's going to be fourth down. And I'm sorry, third down, quick no huddle offense. BGA is right there trying to find out where the ball is if the officials will spot it for them. And no, it's fourth down as I thought, fourth and one. They're going to go with a quick snap and he's going to push. I don't think he got it. I don't believe he got it. I believe the initial push, but let's see. National Christian believes he did not make it, and why they picked up the ball and tossed it to the other official without leaving it where it was for the spot is beyond me. <laughs> they picked up the ball and threw it to another official instead of leaving it where it was. Hmm. And so it looks like there's going to be a measurement. I do not think he made it. I think he's three or four inches short. Chain gang's coming out. And here they come. That is a baffling spot of the ball considering picking it up when it's supposed to leave it right there, especially for a big close call. They're going to get it. They did nose oh. just past it. And so it's going to be first down at the 45-yard line. Maybe uh, somebody in the uh, chat over there can, uh, who's a little behind us can see that play and give us uh, <laughs> a truer spot here. Nashville Christian 
<laughs> will remain on defense at the 45-yard line of BGA. First down and 10. The clock ticking down toward the one-minute mark of the first period. Kennedy in at quarterback again. And he's going to roll to the left. He's in trouble. Now he's going to try to set up, but we pursuit. And we're going to knock him down, looks like, back at the line of scrimmage. Cam Carden, a good pursuit from his linebacker spot. Slight loss on the play. It'll be second down and about 11. Actually closer to right at 10. The scoreboard has second down and a short 11. 34 seconds and ticking, so time for one or two more plays here in the first canto. B.J. to the line. Kennedy brings his team up with another I formation. Double receivers over here on the near side. And the ball once again to the tailback, and he's not going to get anything as Henneberry is hit initially by Jaden Potts. And Potts has been hungry, waiting for his senior season, as so many of these other guys to, you know, so many of our seniors had great uh playing time as juniors, and they're now ready to take the team over. And as the first quarter ends, we'll be back in just a moment. Our score is scoreless. We are knotted at zero from Bellevue with visiting BGA. We'll be back in a moment. Ready to resume play as we will begin the second quarter with BGA at their own 40-yard line, moving right to left if you're listening on your radio dial at home. Third down and 15. Glad you enjoyed that, Chandler. What's a radio dial? <laughs> yeah. Oh, great pursuit there by Potts. He's going to flush him out of the pocket. Quarterback still in trouble, and he is going to be shoestringed by Jay. T. Robbins in the backfield for a big loss. Potts was after him like stink on skunk and then flushed him out of there and Robbins grabs him by the ankles and trips him up. And Ford will be back, excuse me, Berger will be back to punt. Deep, we have a single back and that is number nine, Donovan Smith. And BGA shifts out of their normal punt formation. They got two wide outs. I don't think they're going to be going for it. It's fourth down and 15. The ball is going to be kicked, and Donovan Smith comes up on it, but he's going to have to let it roll, and he also gets a good uh, bounce out of it. But we've got decent yardage back at our own 29-yard line with 11 minutes left here in the Eleven oh two to go. You wonder if uh, both teams throwing an interception has changed the uh, the play calling for uh, the rest of the first half here. The coaching staff maybe going a little more conservative. Right, right. It's been a lot of running since then, but uh, we'll see if the OCs can uh, are going to open up the quarterbacks to to do a little more. All right, Nashville Christian, Jared Curtis to the line. He's got. Uh, a tailback there with Carden. And did we have a delay of game? Did we have movement? It was illegal procedure, yep. So that'll move the ball to the 25-yard line, making it first and 15. 
So both teams being hampered uh, by a couple of penalties, turnover here and there, and not a whole lot of offensive action yet. Both defensives, defenses have played pretty good. First down and 15, 10, 59 left in the second quarter in a scoreless tie. We're going to bring out here Satterfield along with, I believe, Smith. No, that's Warren Brode. And there, he's going to get on the jet sweep to the left. He's got running him 30. Uh, yard line, he's knocked down there after uh, getting the ball back in the backfield about the 26-yard line and got a couple of yards to get back the penalty yardage lost. So it looks like that's a pickup of about six, bringing up a second and nine. So a nice, good sweep there by Warren Brode. And he and Satterfield will come over here again as they will slot and split out to the right side here. Jared Curtis is your freshman quarterback, and he's back to pass. He's got the arm. Let's see. He's uncorking it long downfield. It's going to be overthrown. He's got a cannon over through Satterfield, and – he can throw it. Coming into the contest is Braylon Toll, and we are facing a third down and nine back at the 31-yard line. And that was so the shot they were willing to take or wanting to take, uh, and unfortunately, uh, Jared just uh, cooked it a little bit, but the coverage was really good uh, from number four here by the Wildcats. It was good coverage, and... See if we can loosen him up a little bit. And he's going to throw again. He's in trouble. He's going to run. Beats one tackler, but not the second one. Has a nice run, but it'll be short of the first down marker. It's going to bring up fourth down in a punting situation as the officials spot it. And it will be fourth down at about, about three yards to go. So junior Jacob Ellis back to punt. Back deep is... Henberry for the BGA Eagles. And he again does a little bit of a rugby kick, hits at the 38. We're going to get another good bounce out of it. And it's going to roll out at the 30. And BGA will take possession there. So Chandler, once again, neither team able to really muster a lot of offense. Both of them have gotten a couple of first downs. Neither team has really threatened to score. And we may be in for a defensive struggle here for the night. It's interesting. I was at the home opener at FRA, and the offense was uh, was clicking, and they were trying some different things, both uh, on the ground, in the air, and so it's it's interesting to see. Uh, it looked a little uncomfortable out there at at home. Ball at the 30-yard line. First down and 10. BGA. This time they're going to come under center with Berger. We've got a five-man front this year. And he's going to do a quick pattern out to the right side, complete for five, catching the ball. Number 20, uh, Hammond Tree. Nice reception by the six-foot junior. And first down, excuse me, second down and six at the 36. 9.30 to go. Clock running here in the second quarter in a scoreless tie in Bellevue. Okay. BGA huddles. Go ahead, uh, Chandler. See uh, freshman uh, number four, Blair Otero, out there at, uh, at cornerback. Blair, a freshman, and has gotten significant time this year, and he is on the early depth chart for the Eagle defense. Thompson and Evans split out to this side. Quarterback Kennedy, and we got a timeout. And the timeout is apparently in regards to the scoreboard. So we don't have a lot to report on the stats and uh, highlights and totals yet. Hopefully things will pick up, at least for one of the teams, we hope. So the clock is reset and we'll go again. They did wind the clock. And after this plays over, we'll be down toward the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. Eye formation. Kennedy again. We sneak up from the linebacker spot. We want to blitz, and we just about got to him. And we're going to get to that. Halfback, he gets away for one yard and then not another. As great pursuit there by our defense and making initial hit that time. I believe it was Cam Carden sneaking up from the linebacker spot. He and JT Robbins came right up and gapped in that line. 
So we're at second down and, excuse me, third down and nine. BGA to the line. Third game of the season, opener at home for Nashville Christian. We're 0-2, BGA 0-3, both teams hunting for a win. And we snuck across that line and encroached, and that will make it third and four, it looks like. It's third and nine, so if my math is correct. That sounds good to me, Mike. You're good uh, with those minus five problems. Yeah. I was back in Antioch, and uh, we were doing addition by my high school <laughs> career. 36-yard line. 8.25 to go, third down and four, BGA. Possible passing situation, and now another flag. This time they'll march it back because BGA also violated the procedure rule, and so it'll be back to where it was at third and nine. 8.17 to go in a scoreless first half. Jaden Potts, Kevin Bradley checking back in. Getting more uh, starters back on the on the line there. Third down and nine. Eight minutes left in this first half. 31 yard line. BGA. And now we've got a timeout. Wildcats. So we'll take a brief timeout with the score. Nashville Christian and BGA with nil on the board back in a moment. Quick time out there, we're back ready to go, third and nine. 7.52 to go, we shuffle some men across that defensive front. Back to pass, quarterback, down and out pattern is complete. Nice catch over there. And pulling the ball in is number 13, Will Evans, or is it 17? Will Evans, nice down and out Chandler to pick up a, a big first down to keep BJ's drive alive as they try to Get, sneak into our territory. They are now at their own 43, 7.45 and running here in your second quarter. So again, the crowd just kind of sitting on its hands waiting for something big to happen. Both teams trying to make the first ripple. And Kennedy will set his team down. Wide outs to each side. He will be back to pass, rolling to the left. And a little flare pass complete. Nice play up to the 50. Running wing 45, 40, and down the sidelines and getting a nice run and first down yardage before he's tripped up by JT Robbins. And nice play. It was a, a late developing play, and it really caught us off guard. And they get a first down all the way down to our 38. It's good play design. Ryan DeMumbrian uh, stepped up to throw a hit on uh, the running back, but he was able to peel out uh, to that left side. And Ryan would, Kennedy threw a nice little lob pass over uh, Ryan. And the rest was history, the first down pickup for the Wildcats. BGA ready to scrimmage here up the middle. Uh, nothing there, but he breaks away. He breaks two tackles, breaks three, breaks four, breaks five and lunges past the 35 yard line as Forward would not be stopped as we wrapped him, then didn't wrap him, and then hit him and could not bring him down. And that's the best run of the night, even though it did not go for much. But it was an outstanding run. Pushes the 34-yard line, second and six. After this play, we will be inside six minutes of your scoreless first half. 34-yard line is the scrimmage line. We've got a fullback and a tailback behind Kennedy. Make that Berger. Berger is giving off to number six. He's going to be slammed in the backfield. Ford is met by Peyton Woodard first, our nose guard. Great defensive pursuit. 
forcing a third down and long after a loss of a couple of yards. Kevin Bradley's gonna limp off under his own power. Yeah, he's, uh, this is his first time back after the injury. And we've had several players on that injured reserve list and he is, uh, well, he's hurting. He's come to the sideline limping and the trainer, Miss Kim, will be attending to him. BGA, long huddle this time. They've got third and a long nine. Quickly to the line, and they're gonna give up the middle and initial pursuit. We don't wrap up. He's gonna break away for a first down. And we hit him for a loss and then did not wrap. James Warmbrode coming up from the strong safety but not before a nice first down run. And now we have uh, BGA knocking at the door. We did get inside the, uh, the 20 inside the red zone once, but came away with nothing. And now BGA is down there knocking on our door just inside the 15. Looks like the ball will be on the 14, first and 10. The clock at four and a half to go and clicking here in the first half, double Receivers to the left, so NCS has got to really bow up here. Henberry is going to give to the right side, and we again don't get the full wrap. We, we're making the initial penetration. We're grabbing him, but uh, that time, uh, Ford, Ford's hard to bring down. He's a six foot, 210 pound kid. He's a good sized kid, and they're struggling to bring him down. We get him some new forces, pots back into the contest. We're under four minutes here in the second quarter. BGA quickly out of the huddle. Quick snap situation, second down and three. And they're gonna give to the tailback. He's pounding left side, spinning, turning, and falling down toward the goal line again as Ford. He's short. Ford does not come down easy. So it's gonna be first and goal, placed at about the three. So. They're going to just co keep going to forward till we do something. First down and goal. It looks like it's actually at the one. Is that right? It's right up it's there. It's maybe the two-yard line. BGA and everybody in tight. And they give to him again. He's going to pound left side for six. Touchdown, BGA. Austin Ford, as we mentioned, six-foot, 210-pound senior, and he is a running back. And he's looking like it tonight as they get on the board at the 320 mark. BGA in for the conversion attempt. This is Carson Coco. Ball is snapped. They're kicking toward our gym. That ball is up and it will go down the middle for a seven point lead for BGA. So with the 320 mark of the second quarter, BGA seven, Nashville Christian nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. Chandler Clark here helping me for the third year. Chandler, appreciate that. And um, I know you negotiated a new contract, and every year that stipend keeps going higher and higher. I don't know if we'll be able to afford you for uh, – Wait, you're, you're getting paid for that? Well, I'm, just <laughs> no, I'm, I'm giving mine up for you. Oh, wow. That's All right, here's your kick. It's going to be fielded by Nashville Christian, and we're not going to get too much room there as – Donovan Smith trying to get the ball out, and he doesn't get a lot of space there. We're not going to get quite back to the 25, so we're not in a hole, but not as far as you want to get on a high school kickoff. 3-12 left, plenty of time for us to take it down. We have all three of our timeouts left, so that's plenty of time for the Eagles to do something. So we break the huddle. Well, three-minute offense here. Let's see if they can drive all the way down and – 
tie this thing up. We've got four wide receivers. Jared Curtis probably going to the air, and he is. One step drop, fakes. Now he's going to run, dump it off to Carden, complete. Lunges forward to the 34. Nice little play as Curtis was ready to run and fortunately did not pass the line of scrimmage and was able to dump it off. We come immediately off the ground to the line. Looks like the Tennessee Vols in that quick offense, Chandler. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they do. And we're going to run the ball right side. Carden lunges forward, this time past the 35 to the 36. That will be a nice first down. It's two quick plays. They immediately wind that clock at 2.53. We're going to huddle. We're going to huddle and quickly come to the line again. 2.44 to go. Jared Curtis back there with Carden. Four wide outs again. Curtis rolling to the left. Setting up to throw, fakes it. Now he's back to the right. He's going to put it down and run. Breaks to the outside. Breaks away from one man. Buries his head into the chest of the defender and gets to the midfield strike. It's first and 50 to go for a touchdown. 2.28 to go. We still have all of our timeouts. Nice run by Curtis. Eagles quickly to the line without a huddle. We are really stepping up the pace here and giving the ball off on the right side and running. It's a Bryson Holt there on the was carry. Was that Bryson? That was Bryson, freshman. And he's going to carry to the 48-yard line. And Nashville Christian will come to the line, scrimmaging at first down. Uh, excuse me, second and seven, 154 to go. Snap, back to pass, Curtis. He wants to go downtown, throwing the ball deep down the middle. That pass is in and out of the hands of Satterfield. It was a great pass and a great attempt and a great coverage back there defending was, was it Tucker Carroll? Looks like number 29. Excuse me. Which... I'm sorry, 19, Henneberry, okay. Jack Henneberry. All right, so we come in line again, third down and seven. Nice uncorking of that ball by Curtis, and it was in and out of the hands with the defensive deflection. He's back to pass again, looking, waiting, flushed out, rolling to the right, dumps it off here, complete. Nice juggling catch. They're going to give it to the freshman, Bryson Holt, who grabbed it and tippy-toed inside the line before he went out giving us a first down and just as important stoppage of the clock, 135. First down and 10 at the 37 yard line of BGA. Nashville Christian answering hopefully that punch by BGA. Snap, quick wide out to Warmbrode and try to make a move and lost his footing. That's gonna take the clock to the one and a half minute mark no gain, second and 10. We're immediately to the line. No huddle. We bring three receivers to the right. Split way wide to the other side is Braylon Toll. We've got four wide outs. Back to pass Curtis, rolling to the right. He's going to put it down and run. Goes inside 35, lunges to the 29. He's not going to get a first, but he's close. It's going to be about third and two. Let's see if Coach Brothers takes that timeout, and he does. Good timeout as a good run by Curtis, and that gives us a short field to operate. So Chandler with 1.14 to go, Nashville Christian can take a big momentum drive into the halftime if we can convert this drive. Offense has finally got some life in it. Uh, Jared Curtis has been able to extend plays that, as he's been doing uh, these first couple of games this season with his legs. And uh, Bryson Holt, the freshman, coming in clutch there on that uh, previous completion. So love to see the young guys out there getting uh, getting some time and delivering on it. Well, just found out from our producer Andrew Atkins, who is also overpaid for this position. It says 98 viewers so far. That's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good for an opening night, and a lot of times by the end of the weekend, there are 1,000 views on YouTube. A lot of the kids go home and watch the game, and a lot of parents that were live here will go home and watch their kids play. Third and two. Curtis is going to keep it on the quarterback sweep. He's going to pound close to the first down 
They're going to stack him up at the 28-yard line. The clock is running. First down. No, they've stopped it for some reason. It's close to first down. Is it going to be fourth and one? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Clock now winding again. So this is a huge play for National Christian. Jared Curtis, could he run it from this point? JT Robbins back there. He's going to pass across the middle. Complete to Warmbro at the 20. Lunges to the 19. That gets the first. Coach Brothers has two timeouts in his pocket left. And they wind the clock. The Eagles quickly to the line. They look over to get the call. Clock running down, 45 seconds. First down at the 19. Curtis, he's got four wide outs again, wants to throw, looking, waiting. Will he run? He puts it down at the 20, and he's going to be hit for not much of a gain. He lunges forward, and we'll have to call a timeout with 28 seconds. That will give us one timeout. Still time, but it's becoming a little tighter. Coach Brothers frustrated here on uh, this play. Both the receivers on the top of your screen didn't actually run around. Looked like they were looking to block. There was some miscommunication there on uh, what exactly was uh, supposed to happen. Donovan was the only one who uh, ran a little route and then tried to cut it back up the field to give Jared something, but Jared had nothing to work with. Curtis had nobody to throw to and is a good scrambler and runner, but that time no yard. Well, actually, they're going to give him two. Excuse me. It's going to be second and eight. The ball is going to be on about the 17. Our angle here, our, since we're not up high in a booth, uh, like a college booth, it is tough to see. But we've got second and eight. Ball on the 17-yard line. Eagles trail by seven. Carden in the backfield. We've got Warren Broad coming in motion to the right. Here's Curtis looking, waiting. Throwing the ball into the end zone. That ball is at the last second deflected down. Warmbrode had six and an excellent defensive play by Marable. And boy, we had six right there. Warmbrode thought he had it and an outstanding play by Caden Marble. Uh, six one freshman. Nice play by him. Using those long arms. And that, well, we had holding anyway. And, of course, they will take that penalty. It gives us uh, the down over, but the ball now all the way out to the 37, and now the clock is a big factor with uh, second down and 37 to go for six. We need about 10 more yards for Wyatt Martin's foot. 23 seconds. Jared Curtis, he can always unload it into the end zone at any time. He's back to pass. Pressure coming, steps up into the pocket, wants to throw. He's going to throw it down in the end zone. That pass is going to be caught for six and dropped. We had it. Bryson Holt had it for six points, and the defense and the ground forced the ball out of his grasp. Outstanding throw by Curtis. Outstanding attempt by Holt, but the freshman could not tuck it into the tummy for the six. 13 seconds, so... Look for us to probably heave a couple into the end zone, Chandler. From the 37-yard line, Jared has thrown some good passes here, but the defense has been outstanding as well. National Christian trying to knot this thing up in the inside screen to Carden, 30. Got a little run room, trying to get outside. He's not going to make it. They'll have to call a quick timeout with five seconds, four seconds, and we've got time for a field goal by White and Martin. It would be a 40-yarder from this point. I haven't seen a kick made from this distance in my time at Nashville Christian. So this would be quite a kick for single A play in high school. And let's see what we elect to do. I'd say I'm looking for him here on the sidelines. Uh, Jared is on the sidelines. He uh, give it some uh, some high fives here. So I'll say Wyatt may be in. I haven't seen him yet. He's number 15. We're looking in the sidelines. He may be in that huddle. We'll see. I do see him out there. He is going out there. All right, he's coming out for a 40-yard field goal. This will be the last play. Record here, mate, potentially. It's one hadn't been made this long in a long time. Warm Road will hold. They're going to actually spot it on the 39. It's the 29. This will be a 39-yarder on the last play. 
He's on the right hash mark. White Martin, Jr., he's got the leg. Will he have the accuracy? We switch and uh, shift to the left. Now we're set. Ball is now blown dead as BGA wants a timeout. We'll take a quick timeout with the score. National Christian trailing 7-0. As we resume play, we're back for a 29-yard attempt by White Martin. James Warmbro to hold. This would cut it to 7-3 to at the half. There's your snap. The ball placed down. White kicks it. That ball is end over end, headed toward the creek, and winds just to the right. He hit it well, but not quite where he wanted it, and he's limping off the field. So Chandler will go to the half with a score. BGA 7, National Christian nothing. Well, we're back at Nashville Christian at Keaton Field with a score seven to nothing, BGA, as our cheerleaders are performing down below. We're gonna switch to the booth cam and our special guest today is Coach John Pierce, the legend who has left FRA to join the basketball ranks. Coach Pierce, uh, we are honored to have you back uh, on this campus this time as a member of the coaching staff and thank you for coming to the booth and uh, just welcome. I'm excited to be here. I, it's, I'm uh, enjoying being here so far at school. I'm also enjoying being here tonight. Great crowd and uh, lots of energy and lots of enthusiasm. It's a fun night. Well, uh, you came over here to help our basketball team out. We appreciate that. And uh, I've enjoyed coaching against you. Actually, I've never really enjoyed coaching against you because it was never easy. Uh, but we have been honored to meet each other several times. It's nice to be on the same squad, uh, and it's great that we have converted you to the truth over here. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what uh, what's happened over the summer with your team, and uh, I know you're just getting to know the kids, and kind of just your thoughts on this upcoming season. It'll yeah, be I'm, here before we know it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm super excited about it. I think, uh, you know, we had about a week of practice uh, this summer, and then – Went to a few team camps, and uh, the guys did really well, played really, really hard. And, um, you know, most of our guys are 
playing football, doing football practice and conditioning in the morning, and then coming and trying to play two or three games in the afternoon, and you know, it was really taxing on their bodies, but they still gave a great effort and uh, were very coachable and, and got me even more excited than I was uh, coming in. And we do have a, the challenge at smaller schools such as we have here in FRA, y'all were a little bit bigger, but still overall a relatively small school compared to so many around the state. We've got to share a lot of athletes and we need those football players and baseball players to help us in basketball. That's a challenge. It's a good thing, though. You know, I think that uh, you want guys who are invested in their school. You want guys that are um, willing to do things, even if they're not great at something, you know, do something else to help the school out. And, and uh, that makes – I think that makes schools like Nashville Christian really special. Well, just shifting the gears a little bit uh, to college basketball, uh, Coach Pierce uh, – prepped out of Franklin Road Academy. He was a great star there and then went to David Lipscomb University. It was David Lipscomb College, DLC at that time, and played for Coach Meyer and Coach Roller and Coach Turner. And for those of you who don't know, Coach Pierce is the all-time leading scorer in basketball history. And we just had a former cheerleader taking up the camera <laughs> spot there. But uh, Coach Pierce, just your thoughts on a, a great career, a stellar career. You had the the All-American life there, and uh, just a local hero there. And uh, I know you love Coach Meyer like so many of us. You know, I, I tell my kids about that time all, all the time, and they don't believe me. So I need you to come to my house every <laughs> once in a while and just sort of remind my kids. I try to introduce you as the all-time leading scorer wherever you go. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but I still remember the night you broke the record. Uh, you The ball was given to you, and you heaved it about 30 yards from your dad on the second level. And that was a good look. That looked like a right arm there. Pretty that good was, baseball throw. That was my one assist in college. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you and Hutch were not known for passing, but why if you're right there at the goal? <laughs> That's right. But uh, I enjoyed watching you play. I was coaching at the time at Ezra Harding, but anytime I could sneak, sneak over to McQuitty Gym, I was there. And usually it was four deep standing in the end zone. Uh, and people today can't understand what it was like. I wish yeah, we could these people could see more video of what that the McQuitty experience was a special NAIA phenomenon. Yeah, it was. And such good memories. I think um, not just the, you know, on the court, but just the teams we had. And Coach Meyer was a tremendous influence on me uh, as a coach and, and as, a, as a man. Um, and just a really special time for, for me and my teammates. You know, I have such good memories of seventh floor high rise you know with not just the basketball guys but all the athletes on that floor just you know playing games and doing stupid stuff and you know just having a, a great experience and i think a lot of people that uh did not know naia sports back then and basketball in particular don't realize how many great athletes were in the nation at the naia level uh, uh you were of course one of those but uh, Coach Meyer had a lot of great players. There, there was some, a lot of skill out there. Uh, Marcus Bodie, maybe the best defender I've ever seen. And you guys just had so many great players. You had great coaching, great support from the community. The media supported us like we were major college. Yeah, it was it was a great time and a different time. The, you know, this is pre-internet, so yes, uh, the media was really important and and uh, it was just it was a great time. You know, Marcus, I ran into Marcus the other day and he's. 55 years old, still playing basketball, still looks like he could, you know, play in college. We Maybe we can set up a one-on-one -on -one with y'all for a fundraiser <laughs> here sometime. But uh, well, we're glad to have you over here, Coach, and we'll be on the on the air with your home games this year. And uh, any, any, any idea of kind of what it's going to be like? I know this district, I mean, we're small A, we're single A, but it's a tough district. It is a good district, um, and I've known this district for a while just watching from the outside, and uh, really good coaches, really good players. Um, I'm excited about being a part of it, um, and I'm excited about the guys we have on this team this year uh, kind of heading into that district uh, this season, and, um, you know, we'll see what happens, but I, I feel pretty good about it. Coach, thanks for stepping in, and uh, we'll see a lot more of you during basketball. So. Uh, good luck, and thanks for uh, dropping by to see us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Eagles. Coach. Appreciate it. All right, we'll be back uh, in a few minutes for the second half. We'll take another break here. We're 714 away, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Back at Eagle Field. This is Mike McPherson with Chandler Clark. This game being produced, or our producer, Andrew Atkins. Cameraman is Colin up on top. Freshman X is here running our screen graphics for the first time. We got two newcomers here. And Chandler, lack of offense. We did put together a drive at the end, and Wyatt just missed to the right. We had a drive early in the first quarter, I believe, after a turnover, got it down inside the 20, came away with nothing. So it has definitely been a defensive struggle here. Neither team showing great offense. Both teams have shown good offense at the time. But, you know, both these teams work on defense too, and it's showing up tonight. Yes, there have been bright spots for sure, uh, especially for both defenses. We had an interception. Uh, Braylon Toll for the Eagles was able to snag one early in the first, and then BGA answered right back with an interception of their own. And since then, it's um, – it's been fairly back and forth. The Wildcats put together one good drive and were able to uh, lean on Austin Ford, their running back, who, big running back, who was able to you know, pound his way all the way down to the end zone for a short touchdown towards the end of the second. And they gave us about three minutes left. And uh, Curtis and the, the crew were putting some good things together, but I mean, we had some pen late penalties. Um, and a couple of dropped passes that were well thrown, but well defended as well. So uh, we'll see if the offense can get cooking here in the second half. If uh, Coach Dustin Patton, our girls coach, is listening, we'd like to get you in the press box as we did Coach Pierce, who is our boys coach, and he appeared at halftime here for a, a little highlight of what to look for in basketball, and we hope that Coach Patton can also do that. And right now they're having trouble, looks like, putting the time back on the score clock. So from Keaton Field, we're going to take just a brief timeout. And Jared Curtis is warming up on the sideline with Captain Gage Smith. Captain Gage Smith. I, was, uh, I got distracted there for a second. Gage and Jared are warming each other up. The Eagles are now... Coming over to the sideline, and the clock operators may have it. I think they've got it working now. So on the clock, it's showing we're going to kick off here at about a minute 50. And we'll take just a brief time. We're just still a couple of minutes away. Back in a moment.
We're about ready to resume action as Nashville Christian will come out to receive the second half kick from BGA. So let's see if we can mount some momentum on this offense here. We've got Donovan Smith back deep along with James Wardbrode, two seniors, number seven and number nine. BGA to tee it up. And our crowd waiting to explode. We have not had an explosion tonight. We had a couple of close passes into the end zone, not quite there. Number 31 is teeing it up for BGA. And that kick by Coco is coming down and warm bro at the 15, the 20. Breaks to the right side, left side, back to the 35, 40, 45, 50. And he's finally horse collared down at the 42 yard line as warm bro found a slight opening. We had good blocking there to spring the senior down to the 40 two yard line and we are suddenly in BGA territory with a little momentum there, Chandler. He's a uh, part of our championship track team from last year as well. He's a speedster, don't give him any open field. Nashville Christian to the line, Devin Ray, senior center over the ball. Potts, Woodard, your guards, Bradley and Collins, your tackles. Wide out, Smith over here, Satterfield over on the other side and back to we're giving the ball off to Cam, not much there. He's gonna lunge to the 40 for a pickup. Uh, they're gonna bring it back actually to the 41. He get, gets one yard, second and nine. 11 and a half to go. Third quarter, Eagles trail, seven nothing. BGA up here on the road. 0-3 looking for their first win against an 0-2 National Christian team who's lost both games by one score. Carden, right tackle, 40, 35, breaks outside, 30, 25, tripped up at the 22-yard line, make it the 23, another first down as Nashville Christian is giving the crowd something to cheer about here at Keaton Field. Number 10, JT Robbins is uh, hyping everybody up as well. I love his energy that he's bringing to his team. Ball at the 23-yard line. BGA looking over to the the sideline for their assignments. They're back on their heels a little bit. They'll sit down also with a five-man front as have the Eagles done all night. Got Card in the back of the backfield again at the 23-yard line. It will be Curtis out here to Donovan. He's not gonna get much. Quick out pattern, they fake the handoff and nothing much there as the Wildcats snuffed it out, read it pretty nicely gotten word that we have over 100 viewers currently, so shout out to all of you, whether you're supporting the Eagles or the Wildcats. That's great. Uh, that's, a, that's a good number for us. And, of course, that number on the YouTube sometimes increases to 1,000 by Sunday night. Second down and a long nine. Ball on the 23. Curtis sends Robbins to the left slot, and here's Carden pounding at the center. Lunges pushes, grunts down to the 20 yard line and a nice short run with power. We're bringing Potts back into the contest along with freshman Bryson Holt. It will be third down and seven. 9.45 to go. Clock is ticking. Now we come with a full house backfield, Bryson Holt in the back. So we've got it stacked up. And now the referees are calling a penalty on Nashville Christian. Wrote too many men on the field. We got 12 out there. We got 12 and we're gonna bring one of them out if we're gonna keep playing. <laughs> and uh, that'll take the wind out of their sails. Yeah, the silly Santas came out and now we're bringing Demumbrium out. A bunch of them are coming out. I hope we got, now hope we have enough out there now. Third down and a long 11. Ball back at the 25. So freshman Jared Curtis is probably gonna go upstairs with this next play. We trail seven to nothing. 9.25 of the third quarter. Curtis back there with the long back Carden. He's back to pass looking and another flag. High school football, a lot of penalties. Seems like all the time. And now an illegal procedure on our Eagles is gonna make it a third and 17. It's gonna push the ball back to the 30. Third down and 30 for six. The 
looked like Curtis wanted to go long that time. Both teams have stiffened on the defensive end. BGA trying to thwart this drive. Three wideouts to the left, one to the right. We got Donovan Smith over here. Back to pass Curtis. He's going to throw it down and out pattern. It is complete. It's caught by Donovan. Makes a move. 15 to the 10 and steps out of the bounds. They're going to bring it all the way back <laughs> to the 20. Uh, is that right? He yeah. stepped out. Tough angles here. Kind of a low angle in our press box. It's going to be fourth down, and let's see if they bring Jared on. It would be a 35-yarder. I think we'll probably go for it down here inside the red zone, and that's what we're going to do. No, they're going to go for the kick. No, they're not. Okay. I thought they were hauling for Wyatt, but they were trying to get JT Robbins back into the contest, and we still don't have the play called. It's down to six seconds. We're going to have to call a timeout. And I don't think we can get it off, and we are forced to a timeout that Coach Brothers is not happy to have to use. So we will take a brief timeout. With a score, BGA 7 National Christian nothing, 8.51 left, third quarter back in a moment. Quick timeout, so the Eagles are back to the line. Fourth and five, ball at the 19. I guess it's actually on the 18. Jared Curtis wants to try to get this ball into the end zone. Let's see if we go upstairs, and we will. No, he's going to run off right tackle. He's got it, 15, 10. Makes a move, five, four, three, two, one, and he's going to get a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for pointing at the defender as he goes in. And... We'll still get six, but you can't do that. And the kids today, they just feel like they got a taunt. And he pointed at the defender as he went in. And uh, we called it, and it was, uh, I don't know if, if people realize it was, uh, it was an obvious uh, taunting call. But the six should count, and the Penalty will probably be incurred on the kickoff. So we've got a uh, a point after by White Martin to tie this thing up. So we have finally tied it up. Coach Brothers is not happy. He's having a nice on conversation the with him about six inches away. And so uh, hopefully the freshman has learned there. Warm bro to hold. This will knot it up, kicking toward the creek. Ball kick up. Wyatt Martin's kick is going to split them. Good dog. There's timeout on the field with your score. Now we can mention National Christian's name first. The Eagles seven, the Wildcats seven. We are knotted, 8.42 of the third quarter. Back in one moment. Wyatt, Wyatt Martin will tee it up as we have finally knotted the score with our first touchdown of the night. 
at home. And the kickoff has been moved back to the 25 after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. It's angling over here to the side. It hits at the 35, and he just got on top of that before Warmbrode would have pounced on it. So they'll uh, have good position at the 38. We did not want to kick to one of their scat backs, so uh, not a bad pooch kick after the penalty. BGA will put it in play, first and 10, in their own territory at the 38-yard line. Now, definitely not the clean drive the Eagles wanted. Lots of penalties and the, the late flag after the touchdown run. But uh, they tied it up, so I know that they're at least right. happy to see the scoreboard where it is. And now the crowd coming to life. Five-man front up there. And here is the quarterback rolling to the right. Potts is chasing him down, grabs him, and will sling him for a loss. He couldn't get away that time. Jaden Potts. Grabs him and wraps him up at the 29. And that is a loss of 10. And right off the bat at second and 20, big momentum defense play after a great momentum offensive play. Wouldn't be shocked if that's what they talked about at halftime, wrapping up those defense, uh, those tacklers right there. And he, uh, str the Eagles struggled with that in the first half. Right, Jaden, a big, strong kid. He has hit the weight room. Well, all these kids do. They're all... Uh, a lot stronger than we first got them when they came to school here. We got our five-man front. Peyton Woodard, their nose guard. Bradley and Potts tackles. Santos and Demumbrium, your ends. We got another penalty, and it's going to be really long now. It's going to take the ball back inside the 25-yard line, making it second and a long ways. What is that, 30 yards? Close to 30, maybe second and 29. So BGA way back after a decent field position. Man in motion this way and a fake to him. Quarterback runs off right tackle. Nice running room as we finally trip him up, but he pushes past the 30 to the 31 yard line. JT Robbins from the linebacker spot, number 10 finally pops him down to get back some of the penalty and sack yardage, it will still be third and long. Looks like third and about, is that third and 18 or 19, something like that. They got 16 on the scoreboard. Okay, third and about 16 or 17 to go. BGA, big defensive play coming up for National Christian to stop here and we get it right back. BGA hoping to keep their drive alive. It hasn't been much of a drive yet. Back to pass, being flushed out. He's going to uncork it. No, he doesn't have time. Now he's going to run out of there. Makes one move, beats one man, but not the other. Cam Carden meets him with other Eagles. Fourth down. Big defensive stop by Nashville Christian. BGA forced to punt. Great job by Braylon Toll there. One-on-one uh, -on -one coverage, and he stayed with his man the entire way. Didn't give Kennedy... Any option, and JT able to take him down. All right, BGA to punt. And we've got deep is Donovan Smith. He wants to fill this one. Let's see what he does with it at the 30. Trying to beat one man, get to that corner. He does, 35, 40. Don't clip, 45. Tight ropes nearly to the 50. We had two guys really do a good job of avoiding a clip. Ran right up to the the pursuers and then let up smartly and that avoided a big clip penalty instead Nashville Christian has pushed the ball on the punt return to the 50 yard line it's first down and 50 to go for the lead as we will march toward Charlotte Avenue Jared Curtis back in after his ears were burning on the sideline the freshman has done a good job tonight. He's had a couple of passes right there, but the defense knocked them away. First down and 10. Cam Carden back there with him. Slot is JT. And we're going to give to Cam at 50. Breaks outside, 45. Cam, 40. Cam, 35. Seam to the 25. 20. We're going to get a flag. And they're going to wrestle him down. He's going to fall into the end zone for six. But the... 
the holding call back here, and uh, man, yeah. that's unfortunate. He found the seam. You know, uh, I always like to go back and try to look and see if I can find the calls because sometimes they're not there. Uh, you can call a hold on every play, and apparently the referee saw something that was too obvious to pass up. Yeah. Coach Brothers is talking with a referee. He does not seem animated with the officials, so uh, he's not real pleased. Coach I- Brothers, uh, he's got a, he, he can see all 22 kids out there at once, so he – He's watching, and when he uh, – I tell you this, he's usually right when he discusses, uh, but I know, I'm sure the officials had an angle and they thought that was it. Well, we lose a touchdown run after the great run by Carden. That would have given us the lead. Boy, he found a great seam. 49-yard line. Curtis back to pass, looking. Flushed out of the pocket, makes a move. Now he's going to try to run. He's in trouble and thrown down at the line of scrimmage. Still just second down. It will be back to the original line at the 50. So it's still second down, 10 to go. The clock at the 535 mark and running here at National Christian Keaton Field in Bellevue, Tennessee on a nice warm night to open our homestand. Next week we go to Columbia Academy. Clarksville Academy. I'm sorry, Clarksville Academy. Wide outs, two to the right, one to the left. On a second and ten, Curtis is going to give up the middle. That's uh, Brock Haywood, the sophomore. Boy, he pushes along with his lineman. He's going to get about seven yards. Nice, quick handoff, quick run, and a good push by the left side of that line with Potts and Collins and DeMumrium over there pushing forward. Nice pickup, third down and seven with Brock Haywood picking up good yardage. Our crowd to live, to life here a little bit more. We've got wide outs again, two to the right, one to the left. Brock is back there with Curtis, third down and three. And he's going to give to Brock. He's got a first down to 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. They will not catch Brock Haywood. Touchdown, 43 yards. The sophomore runs off the left side bracket, blocking of Potts, Collins, and DeMumbrium into the touchdown for six. And Nashville Christian with their first lead of the night. The blocking was excellent. The running spectacular. And the play call exactly what we wanted and needed. White Martin can give us the seven-point lead. Warm road to hold. Snap down. Kick up and good guy. And Nashville Christian striking like lightning with Brock Haywood in the 43-yard run. Takes the lead in the third quarter with 4.23 to go. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in a moment. Back at Keaton Field at Nashville Christian Football Stadium in Bellevue, Tennessee. Nashville Christian has just taken the lead after the 43-yard run of Brock Haywood, sophomore. And, man, he didn't have to switch direction at all. It was a straight-line run of 43 yards to give us the lead in White Martin to tee it up. Let's see if uh, we pooch kick again or he's going to try to drive it to the end zone. Martin approaches the ball, and here's our kick, and he's going long. Nice one. It's going to sail into the end zone for a touchback. Wyatt punched that one, 62 yards. Nice kick by the junior. So BGA to put it in play at the 20-yard line, and now let's see if the Wildcats can counter punch an excellent Offensive drive by Nashville Christian. 14 to seven. 
BGA to the line. Kennedy, sophomore, 6'2", 171, good-looking athlete. He's got an eye formation behind him. He takes the snap. He wants to pass. Quick out pattern is broken up. Nice job over there by Donovan Smith on the corner as he came up to deflect the ball out of his hands. That's your senior class president right there. Nice job. Uh, he came by to give me a donut during class today. I did not tell him I'd already had two because I'd already had three. <laughs> Second down and 10, 417 to go. Sadly, that's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. But I think they were low fat, I believe. Every donut's low fat. Second and 10 after the breakup of the pass by Smith. BJ with a deep tail back. It's going to go to him up the middle, and we pursue pretty nicely. Bradley was there along with nose guard Peyton Woodard. Good pursuit there by the Eagles. We'll bring up third and long. Good to see Bradley back out there. Yes. He limped off early in the uh, first half with a his foot was bothering him, but I think he got some tape on. I think he's, uh, he's happy to be back out there. Right. Third down and about six, uh, a long six. They got a nose it past the 30, and they're just at the 24. 3.41 to go. The Wildcats to the line, big defensive play for Nashville Christian. They've got the momentum back, the crowd alive down below us. BGA back to pass. This is Kennedy. Pass is going to be caught complete for a first down. Nice catch that time by Hammontree as we had two receivers in the area, and Hammond Tree comes open. And are there flags? There is. They're, on the marching, far side. The other, they're marching the other way. Our crowd is buzzing because the call is. Was that an unsportsmanlike conduct call? No, that wasn't. What was that? I missed the signal. I, We're at I'm this not weird sure. angle here that's blocked, but. At the 24. Third down and six, 254 and counting in the third quarter. Big third down, crowd coming to life below us. Wide outs, two to the right, one to the left. Single tailback, back to pass. Kennedy looking, waiting. Short one is nothing is there. Nothing, Cam Carden snuffs it out. They look like they're going deep and then dumped it off right in the middle of the line and that wasn't the place to go because Cam Carden wrapped him up and forcing a fourth down and nine back at the 24. Donovan Smith wanting to break one. He's gonna step back to his 45, and if he can get running downhill, he can break a big one. Back there with him is James Warmbrode. The punter as BGA shifts into a different alignment. Gavin Berger, the junior, he'll kick it away. And we were almost there. The kick is going to be fielded by Donovan Smith, 45, and he pushes it, slammed to the ground at the 43-yard line. But a good job by Donovan coming up on the ball, didn't let it bounce, and got a few yards out of it. Well, we were right on top of the punter. But once again, Chandler, we have a short field of about 42 and a half yards and a first down, 42 and a half to go for a touchdown. We'll see if... Uh... Brock Haywood, who had the hot hand on the last drive, is out there. I don't see him. Maybe he's still getting some oxygen from that 40-yard uh, <laughs> run. Jared Curtis brings his team to the line, the freshman. Ran for one touchdown. Then Brock Haywood for another, 43 yards. Curtis got Carden in the back. And did we jump? Left side, unfortunately. We moved. So that will push the ball back five. We're still in our BGA territory. Clock down under two minutes now into the third quarter. Great crowd on hand. BGA has a uh, pretty good crowd over there. And then in our end zone, we've got a line of chairs, lawn chairs. And then on the sideline over here, stretching all the way around to both goalposts of the Eagle fans. Now here's Curtis, the freshman from the 48. He's going to give this time to Carden, pounding in the middle, and he's going to push the ball near the original line of scrimmage. 
It looks like it will bring up about second and 11. Nashville Christian quickly off the ground and to the line. Going with the no huddle offense. Bryson Holt, freshman, split wide to the left slot over here on the right. And the ball is going to be faked by Curtis. He's in trouble. Scrambles to the left, throws it away. They're probably going to get him for intentional grounding because he was still inside. And there was a man the over there. Yeah, and let's see. Coach Brothers is saying there's a guy over there. There is a receiver over there. Coach Brothers is pointing at the receiver, and the official says no. Well, so Coach Brothers is so adamant he's going to call a timeout. And this one of those, I understand this, you've got to talk to the official and find out what is the deal here. The, uh, the home crowd below us definitely agrees. Yes, that a few of our fans agree with Coach Brothers. Our more uh, <laughs> vocal fans. And we got a few of them. And great support down below. Uh, Dustin Patton texted me after uh, we mentioned he might be with us soon. He said, uh, you want me to come over after the all-time leading scorer was interviewed? Uh, he said, I'm just a simple, he's a, just a simple peasant. Uh, he said, I scored the same amount of college points that Coach Pierce scored on the wrong basket, which is zero. Did, so, you, did you ever score on the wrong basket when you were playing? Uh, uh, be honest. I, I tell you, my career was a uh, professional rec league. That's about all mine was. But Coach Patton, uh, it's not about college career. It's about uh, your upcoming team. So we're looking forward to having you again in our booth. Coach Patton is also spotted for us when Chandler couldn't be here. And looking forward to our girls team also is we should have mentioned that his daughter is over here as our post player, Anna Pierce, and I apologize for failing to mention that. He should feel worse than me for not mentioning that his daughter is over here. So that's more on Coach Pierce than it is on me. Looks like Coach Brothers' conversation with the ref didn't change anything. I didn't think it would. Third and 32, ball on the 35. So we've got a big passing down. Instead, Carden, right tackle, 35. Breaks away 40, 45, boy, he uh, saw a little bit of a seam. Carries it to the 46, nice run. And right now when Cam touches it, you're expecting some lightning to strike, and it just about did then. Uh, he's run real hard, him and Brock Haywood both with good yardage here. Ball nosed over the 40. Jacob Ellis in the punt. Clock running inside a minute. He gets it away down the right mm -hmm. sideline. It's going to bounce and roll to the 24. Wildcats didn't have everybody off the field. Oh, that's good. Was that the call? Not enough or too many men on the field? If that's the case, we're going to, well, it won't give us a first down. I don't know if we'll punt it over or not. This will be an interesting decision by Coach Brothers. The officials are telling him the options. And he's already made his decision, and they're going to – what are we going to do? Tell you, the illegal substitution or 12 men on the field. Coach Brothers is having discussion. Coach Brothers will not let up. The man knows the rules. He would make a great referee. I, I tell you, and these officials, <laughs> they, they better study as much as he does because he knows the rule. 49-yard <coughs> line. We're going to punt again. <coughs> Excuse me. Ellis gets it away. It will be a little deeper this time. So, oh, that did help us out. That ball is going to roll inside the 15-yard line. So, good decision to re-kick. 29 seconds left in the third quarter. The Wildcats are going to put the ball in play as they bring it across to the 12-yard line. Nose just outside, or actually right down on top of the 12. So the Eagles will go back on defense. BGA to the line. 
backed up on their 12. Eagles with a seven point lead. Ball up the middle, good running. Lunging past the 20, Carden hitting. Ford who dives to the 20. We've got an injury of BGA on the, on the sideline. Big lineman number 65, Julius Pittman, and he is 6'5", 365. So he's a sophomore, so he's still growing. He is a dude. So a size like that is what the college is going to be looking for here. I'd be so, cramping a bit maybe. Probably so. We uh, tell you, that, uh, that first game over at, I guess it was at Good Pasture, well, we had cramps just constantly in that contest. Maybe, not, maybe it was the FRA game. FRA? Yeah, Over. FRA game. I mean, it was almost at least one every four downs on both teams. So it looks like the first one. And so fortunately, Pittman is walking off under his own power. BGA brings their offense onto the field at the 20. So they are 80 away from a tie game. 21 seconds left in the third quarter. Tight, close contest here for the fans in Bellevue. Eye formation. Berger, this time your quarterback. And he's going to give up the middle. A couple of yards by Ford. But Cam Carden, again, how many times have we said his name on defense? And that will run out our third quarter. So from Keaton Field in Bellevue, Tennessee, we have a seven-point lead. National Christian will take that advantage to the fourth quarter, and we'll be back for the fourth and final canto in just one minute. As we resume play, fourth quarter action to begin. Third down and one. BJ, <coughs> excuse me, BJ will sneak it forward and getting the first down. And so these final 11 minutes are probably going to be quite tense. Both teams very hungry for wins. Coming in is Cooper Collins, number 79. BGA will go left side. Nice running room is the push forward. Cam again, Carden on the stop. Cam's going to have over 10 tackles tonight. Well, I'm, he is. Or a betting man. Both teams have played good defense tonight, only three scores. Fortunately, two of them arise. The clock ticking down to 11 minutes in a seven-point lead with the Eagles. One man in the backfield. It goes to him, and he is going to lunge forward for basically no gain. A flag came down in the backfield of BGA. Holding on the Wildcats. That'll push it back. They were close to a first, and so that's going to make it second and long. They get the down over, but it's going to take it back to the 25. You don't see holding as much on a quick hitter in the middle, but, boy, they must have held quickly because the play didn't last that long. 
the officials wind the clock to 10.50 and running. Nashville Christian, if you joined us late, Jared Curtis with the touchdown and a 43-yard run by Brock Haywood. Back to pass, BGA. Down and out pattern, they timed it. Just a yard off is really a, uh, a good pattern. Intended number for number uh, 20, uh, Hammond Tree. Uh, the ball was released before he made his cut, and it was really right there, just about a yard too far. Nice looking timing pattern, not quite there. So that brings up third and long, third and 17. So a big, big offensive play for BGA. Nashville Christian wants to get it back and eat up a little time or punch one in the end zone early for a two touchdown lead. BGA wanting to drive and knock this thing up. Back to pass, we've got another penalty and the illegal procedure is gonna back up the Wildcats even further. Third down and about 22 now. So they've cost themselves 10 yards of penalties here. So it will now be third down and 22 ball moved all the way back to the 12 yard line. So BGA really close to their own goal line brings in the play, the crowd alive in front of us. Jake down there encouraging the fans as always. BGA to go upstairs, I'm sure. Throwing the ball on the out pattern over here. It is just out of the grasp of the receiver. Uh, Hammond Tree again, and a great pattern again. Threw it right there on the money. A very catchable ball, but went through his hands and BGA deep in its own territory. We forced to kick it out. Donovan is able to stand inside the 50 yard line. The punter is Ford. The receiver, Smith, I'm sorry, Berger, excuse me. Smith waiting for it, and he's going to come up and field it at the 49, backs up to the 50, looking for a block. Gets one, now breaks it up the middle to the 40, still stuttering and lunging up to the 40-yard line. Came close to getting a behind uh, in the back <laughs> block there. I thought they might call that one, but we avoid the penalty. And we are first down and 40 to go for six. And in this game, that might put it away if we can take it in right here. Still a long ways to go. 9.49, Jared Curtis huddles his team, brings them to the line. Brock Haywood back at running back. Let's see if they go right to him. Fullback is JT Robbins. JT Robbins. JT will block for Brock. 40, he does it again, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five. They won't catch him again. Give him six. Touchdown, Brock Haywood. This time, it was just a 40-yard run. Give it to him. We knew it was coming to him. And he gets great blocking again. Potts, Collins, and DeMumbrium on that left side. Opening up a nice seam. And Haywood takes it the distance for his second touchdown. 43 and 40 yards. White Martin kicking toward the gym. The ball is down. That kick is going to be booted through the uprights. Good die. There's timeout on the field with the score. Nashville Christian exploding to 21 to seven over BGA after the 40 yard run by Brock Howard. Haywood, excuse me. And we'll be back with 9.39 left in the contest in a moment.
Wyatt Martin to tee it up as we return to Eagle Field with a 14 point lead. BGA is in trouble. They've got to get two scores and they've only got 9.39 to do it. There is time, but it will take quite a run. Martin pegs it once again into the end zone. White not letting them return. He's limping a little bit, so he's favoring his leg a little bit, but great kick by White Martin. Second time he's put it in the end zone. Nine thirty-nine to go. Chandler BGA's got first and eighty to go for a score, and they have to score on this drive to stay alive. Absolutely. And the, the quarterback in uh, Hammond Tree, his favorite receiver, have had a couple of chances on that last drive. We'll see if they can cook anything up here. Back to pass. And he's throwing the bomb, trying to get it all back at once, and it's incomplete. So Kennedy back in, and he overthrows his receiver, stops the clock, brings the ball back to the 20. Second down, and we are at Clarksville Academy next Friday, and that's about a two-day drive up there. At least it seems like it. 9.33 to go. Week Twin after that, homecoming here, Davidson. Huge game. That is. That is always an exciting contest with a lot of emotion. From the 20 again. Second down and 10. Clock stopped at 9.33. BGA's Kennedy trying to make something happen, rolling to the right. He's being pursued, and he's going to be sacked and slammed down. That ball is fumbled, I believe. B.J. recovered it. J.T. Robbins from the linebacker spot. He came in untouched and slammed the carrier down. They fell on top of the ball, but it's all the way back at about the three-yard line. B.G.A. is in a world of hurt. Would not want to be that quarterback right now after that smack. Boy, they, they're, uh, they're in trouble. So, Nashville Christian, still a lot of time left, but to BGA, that clock's flying by with a two-score deficit. And now here they come to the line, and it's a long way to go. Third down, and it's well over 20, isn't it? Is that about 20? Yeah, about 22 yards or so to go for a first. It's certainly not third and 10, that's for sure. Did BGA call the timeout? And with a score and a timeout at Keaton Field in beautiful Bellevue, Tennessee. National Christian leading 21 to 7. Back in a moment. If you are walking around your living room or getting out of your car and rejoining us, it's third down and 26. BGA in a two-touchdown deficit in trouble. Back to pass in their end zone. And another, another flag. And the wheels are coming off for BGA. Ball start. And now that ball's back there. Is it on the one-yard line? Maybe the two? It is third down and... Close to 30. The, the scoreboard says third down and 26. 8.42 to go. Kennedy's got to catch it in the shadow zone goal post. And here we come. We're trying to get that safety. And we may get it. No, he rolls out of there, throws across the middle. Complete. Nice completion to get out of uh, part of the hole up to the 18-yard line. And catching that pass is Christian Thompson. Uh, the stop by James Warmbrod, BGA. They really don't have a choice. Um, I know they'd like to go for it, but they just can't really afford to. It's fourth and 12. So they've got to kick it away and hope for a quick turnover. And let's see if Donovan 
Smith can get running downhill again. The punt will angle toward the sideline. Donovan comes up on it, asks for a fair catch, and we're going to be in business at the 46. And barring a turnover, if we just eat up a few minutes, this baby will be done. 7.46 to go. Nashville Christian next week at Clarksville Academy. The following week, homecoming here against Davidson Academy. So uh, schedule's going to get really challenging and fun. And Chandler looking forward to these upcoming games. Friday night football in America doesn't get any better. Jared Curtis will go under center this time. Cam Carden would like to receive that football, and he will. No, we're going to pass. Curtis fading to throw, going for everything down the middle. That pass is complete to Donovan Smith. Give him six, 45 yards. Touchdown, Eagles. Great fake. Great pocket protection. Curtis launched it perfectly. Donovan Smith got behind the defense. Touchdown, Eagles. I'm sure the Wildcats did not have that sniffed out. That was definitely the coffin receiving its last nail. And so White Martin on for the conversion attempt. Warren Brode to hold. He has missed any tonight. That kick is good. His fourth of the night. National Christian has exploded with 28 points unanswered to take a three touchdown lead down to the 737 mark. And we can just about stick a fork in it, Chandler. I love the play call. I love well, yeah, that was. I, I love that. Uh, you know, going for the kill there. And some unknowledgeable fans think that's uh, trying to run up the score. It's not. It's called working on plays. It's one thing if it's 50 to nothing and you do that. Uh, that was a play done against a very good team that still had an outside chance to to come back, and we ended it with that one play, and that's our job. So uh, I get a little frustrated with whiny fans that whether it's on our side or theirs, uh, worrying about running up score. Your team's job is to keep that from happening. And we want to be good sports, but uh, that great play call by our offensive staff. Wyatt, see if he can punch the third one into the end zone. He's going to squib it down the middle. It's going to be caught on a bounce at the 5'10", 15, 20. Cuts against the grain and good coverage there by Nashville Christian. The 24-yard line, Lawson Andrews. Lawson last year set a school record 100-yard TD interception. And that will probably never be broken. <laughs> and it can't be because if you intercept it deep in the end zone and run it all the way back, you still only get credit for 100 yards. Mm. So Lawson's name will be in the record book for all time. The best you can do is tie him. First down and 10. And the clock is now a big factor against the BGA Wildcats. This is going to be a big win for us to stop the, stop the bleeding a little bit. And that pass is down and out, out of bounds quickly. Receiving the ball on an out pattern there. We don't have him. Number four, sorry about that, BGA. Chandler and I do not apologize for being homers here. We, uh, we are the home team. Um, we want to be respectful of the other team, but we don't know the other team like we do our kids, so uh, we are definitely homers. Uh, we've got a five-man front, but we're sneaking up there. Now uh, we back off a little bit. Bam, he slammed down in the middle of the field and knocking him down. Ryan DeMumbrian with a nice hit as he broke through the line of scrimmage. Clock winding towards seven minutes. BGA slow with the play. Berger back in, shifts men around. Third and three. BJ's got to get this to keep the drive going. I would assume they would consider this four down territory. BGA waiting. Snap. Ball is going to be broken to the outside and nothing going. Now he breaks away. And we finally gang tackle him. 
inbounds at the 39 yard line. So that's nice to keep that clock running. It does stop for a momentary first down moving of the sticks. They bring it to the 38. The clock will be wound and we will start ticking down at six and a half minutes. Cooper Collins back in there. He also came in there with uh, Nate Thompson. Here's a long pass down the middle. That pass is complete and an excellent grab by Hammontree. Excellent play. We got a flag back here. What is it, Chandler? An illegal shift by the Wildcats. And so that will negate the pass to Hammontree. And that was a nice reception. They've been looking to connect all night, him and uh, Kennedy, and it finally happened, but yep. it will be scratched from there, the records. There have been a plethora of penalties against the Wildcats. I'm not sure what plethora means, but I think it fit in right there. And we're taking down towards six minutes. Ball at about the 30, looks like the 33 yard line. Now Berger, the quarterback, and a little bit of a just out pattern to the 44. They're gonna say he trapped it. He's arguing, saying his knees caught it. Unfortunately, they uh, can't review. The official's wiping it off. Number four, nice reception there. We just don't have a number for him. And so it come back, comes back to the original line of scrimmage where it will be second down and 15 to go. So thank you for our 100 plus guest that view tonight. We hope you could hear us clearly and watch the contest. And enjoy it from your home or listening in your car. Here's BGA with a quick out to the left side and he slammed down over there by Blair Otero, a freshman. Nice open field tackle by Blair. Another one of our upcoming freshmen. We get some new guys in there. Potts and Bradley coming in to beef up that line again. Great defensive effort by our Eagles and pressuring the quarterback. He's in trouble. He breaks away and gets a block on the sideline and slammed out of bounds over there by Warmbrode about the 43. Kevin Bradley is uh, frustrated. He was not able to <laughs> keep a hand on the quarterback who was rolling out. Yeah, he missed our first two games with injuries, so that off week gave him an extra week to recover. So I know he's out there limping, but he's, he's not going to come out. He wants to stay in there, and he needs to. He's in there with Cooper Collins. Berger back to pass. Another down and out. It's what they've done most of the night. They just haven't had a lot of luck with it. And the ball goes to National Christian on down. So the Eagles will try to run out the clock here with a three touchdown lead. And our state's anthem is being played in the background, if you can hear Rocky Top. Hope that's played a lot on Saturday. Jared Curtis, freshman, he's got Cam Carden back there. And it'll probably go to him and does. Left side, 40, 35. Will he break another one, 30. Punching his way for a first down to the 26 yard line. First down, Cam Carden. He, when a late he, flag comes out. He and Brock Haywood have just really run for daylight. Okay, we've got a flag over there. Officials discussing it. Clock stopped at 429. Your score 28 to seven. Early on, BGA took a lead at seven to nothing in the first half. We tied it. And run down the scoring since then for the Eagles there, Chandler, could you? Chandler, could you? Yes, yeah, sorry. I was <laughs> waiting to see what this uh, call was from the I'll look for the, the call. You give us the rundown of I'm the scoring. I'm so sorry. Uh, it was slow for the Eagles in the first half. Uh, BGA scored a one-yard touchdown run towards the end of the 
second quarter. And then the second half has been all Nashville Christian. Jared Curtis had an 18-yard touchdown run. Brock Haywood has two touchdown runs for 43 and 40 yards. And then the beautiful catch and run by Donovan Smith for 45 yards brings us to 28-7. We're down uh, on the 10-yard line. May punch it in again here. Right side running Brock Haywood. But we have scored 28 unanswered in the second half. Total domination, trailing seven to nothing at the half. It was a defensive struggle and we have exploded with four scores. Your clock winds to four minutes. Curtis brings the team to the line as they walk slowly to scrimmage. Cam Carden, the lone back. Let's see. I'm sure it'll go to him. It does at left tackle. Ten to the nine to the eight. Broke one tackle. Didn't get out of the grasp of the second one. Picked up about three. The clock now at 326. And by the time we get this play going, we'll, we should be under three minutes. So we're uh, taking our time, our sweet time, and a sweet win coming up for Nashville Christian. Again, they will be traveling to Clarksville Academy next week. We'll be back in this booth two weeks from tonight to bring you the homecoming game against Davidson Academy. Jared Curtis moving players around. We're now under three minutes of this contest. See if we can put one more in the end zone. We'll go to Cam again, goes up the middle to the eight, and they're gonna pile them up pretty, pretty solid there, and that clock will go to fourth down. Let's see if we bring in Wyatt to work on the field goal kicking. He is staying on the sidelines. So we may just try to run out more clock. That may be the idea here. Oh, nope, there's no Oh, here out. he comes, okay. So Wyatt will try to redeem himself here, and he would love nothing more and to get three through the uprights. We're going to place it at the 20, at the 14. It will be a 24-yarder kicking toward the gym. The clock running, 28 to 7. Wyatt with the hold of Warm Road. Here's your snap. Ball down. That kick is up, and he got it off. It is good as it gets just inside the right upright. They had great pressure, but Wyatt got it off and puts three more on the board for a 31 to seven. That's 31 unanswered in the second half. Is BGA had to be thinking, you know, we've played good defense tonight and then we look up and we've written 31 on the board. Just like that, it only took one half as well. Well, that was outstanding. Just an outstanding second half. So, wish we could bring you the games that are on the road, but uh, that's just not possible to set up. So we do have five games, four more coming up here for you at home. And Wyatt Martin will tee it up again. So with 2.03 to go, man, this was a close game and we just had nothing in the first half. It's just truly a tale of two halves. As Wyatt marks off his kickoff distance and he's ready to approach the ball. And that kick will be meandering down to the sideline and it's gonna be fumbled out of bounds. Well, that's uh, once again, BCA is on its heels. They can't get out of that end of the, the field. If only he hadn't touched it. I think that would have uh, yeah. gotten much nicer <laughs> field position there. Yep. So it's been a tough night for the Wildcats. Uh, they're not used to going 0-4, I guarantee you that. Uh, great school down there and great kids. And um, had some good students at my church that went there. Uh, Jackson Berry was a great baseball player there. Unfortunately, lost his life in a terrible accident in the middle of his career at BGA. He was my son's best friend. And we've had a lot of great association with people down at BGA. And, it's a great school with a great historic background. And here's Nashville Christian stopping a pa short pass. And coming up is Warm Road and Robbins. So 
BGA picks up about eight. They're trying to mount one last drive as this game is winding down. Another out pattern, that one's dropped, and unfortunately, the clock stopped also. Sellers had it in his hands and dropped it. So I hope the ball will at least stay inbounds and nobody will drop it so this clock can run out <laughs> and end mercifully for BGA. I know uh, it's going to be a tough ride for them back down I-65 to Franklin. Boy, our guys have looked great in the second half. What a, an incredible game for them. Like you said, those first two losses in the season were one score yep. losses. So We're two plays from being 3-0, and yeah. But that's football. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we've learned a lot from them. BGA trying to get something wide. It looks like they'll push forward for a first down. That clock, uh, I know it seems like it's running fast for them. When you want to get out of here, it's, <laughs> it's running slow. So uh, they're quickly... Officials quickly putting the ball down and pounding in the backfield. Potts throws him down. And he was out there with Vasily Santas. Santas is also a hockey player, an outstanding hockey player who came to Nashville to, to train down here, maybe be a predator one day. BGA to pass down the middle. It is incomplete. That will stop the clock at 49 seconds, 31 to 7. So good opening homestand win for the Eagles, who were in the state championship last year, lost to Donaldson Christian. And um, Coach Brothers' postseason record is just incredible. He's got a state championship from the fall of 2015. Now, I was proud to say uh, my basketball team also got to the state that year. We didn't win it, but I had a lot of great athletes uh, during that time frame. BGA to pass again. Pass down the middle is incomplete also. So that's going to bring up a fourth down in BGA's last effort about to come up here with 43 seconds to go. So if you're still hanging on, we're still here. We get paid to the end, so we'll keep carrying it on. 43 seconds left. BGA getting a late player into the scrimmage. Actually, two more coming in. 43 seconds. And they are punting it away on fourth down, and we'll just leave the ball alone. We'll go to the 44-yard line. We will take a knee and go home. And that's just what Coach Brothers told Jared Curtis to do. Mm -hmm. Kneel down and touch your knee to the ground and end it. But, Coach, wouldn't it be fun if we just did a fake kneel and sent a couple of the receivers down to the end zone? Probably would not be fun for the opposing. That would probably be on the Internet. Uh, so we want to thank uh, Andrew Atkins, our producer. Uh, the X-Man, the X-Factor, ran the graphics and up on the booth with the camera was Colin Sawyer, I believe. Yes, Colin Sawyer. So there's the knee. We're going to go ahead and, and take it away here. I know you want to see the kids shaking hands, but we're going to wrap it up here. I want to thank Chandler Clark again. Chandler, good to have you back for your third season, helping me out, and I appreciate that a lot. So as we leave, 31 unanswered points by Nashville Christian. We go on the road to Clarksville Academy next week. We'll be back at this ball field, in this booth, in this town, at this school, as this is Mike McPherson for Chandler Clark and Andrew Atkins, our producer. The Eagles, 31-7 with the win. Thank you for your time at this time. Until next time on this, the Eagle Football Network.